All right, folks. Black Hound Optics, HR125. It creates more waiting periods, gun purchases, band standard capacity magazine, certain types of ammunition, silencers. The question still has not been answered. How will this stop the criminals? Black Hound Optics, accurate and affordable guarantee. Sporting optics that go the distance, backed by customer service, and goes the extra mile. Great guys, great product, and a great company. That is making optics affordable. On top of quality optics, they pay close attention to the customer experience. Did you know their scopes come with mounts? So you don't have to worry about finding out one that fits. We are so excited to have them on as official partner of the show. Ask for them at your local gun store or find them online at blackhoundoptics.com. I see why you're confused, Dave. That top part looks like someone else is supposed to read it, doesn't it? Well, it's just there. And we gotta, I thought, we got we to gotta talk to the, the Who's programmer. the producer? And who the heck's producing this? I don't know. Rich. Rich. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> that should have been down below, huh? I don't know. <clears throat> All right. We have a really cool call-in guest. I'm very. I'm actually really, really excited about this. This is very, very cool. Uh, my favorite part of the whole Second Amendment experience is, of course, the politics. And uh, my little niche is uh, local politics, all the local boards and councils that have such a huge impact on your life. And up in Yucaipa, uh, which is San Bernardino, they, we had a, a city council member lead the charge um, to make a statement about uh, some of the ridiculousness that's going on federally. So I asked him to come on and talk about it. John, are you there? I am. Hey, John. John Thorpe from the Yucaipa City Council. Um, up in San Bernardino, whereabouts is Yucaipa? For for uh, the, the you, you, people are listening from all over, over Southern California. Whereabouts is Yucaipa? In about? the world. So Yucaipa is going to be in San Bernardino County, as you stated. We're off of the 10 Freeway, and we are just east of Redlands. So you'll come to San Bernardino, uh, Loma Linda, Redlands, then Yucaipa as you're heading out towards Palm Springs. And how many people? What's the population of Yucaipa? Uh, I believe we're around fifty-three to 57,000. Nice. And you're new on the council, right? That is correct. Got elected in November. Congratulations. Sam, yeah, congratulations. San Bernardino County Gun Owners was proud to uh, endorse you and, and play a small part in all the hard work that it took to get you elected, and congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So did you – now, tell everybody, you know, the Second Amendment is pretty important to you. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, we endorsed – or San Bernardino County Gun Owners endorsed you uh, very proudly. It was a uh, an endorsement that you expressed a lot of gratitude for. Tell everybody a little bit about your, your views on the Second Amendment and why it's important to you. Well, you know, I, I uh, am new to running for city council, and uh, and but I – have a strong stand and a strong view on our constitutional rights to uh, be able to protect ourselves. And the Second Amendment is something that I think is currently under siege across our across our country, whether it be at state levels or it be at the country at the national level as well. Um, yep, I think I it's very right. important that we should be able to protect ourselves and our family. Um, as we know, I mean, law enforcement is an important role, but law enforcement can't be everywhere. So we need to have the ability to protect ourselves. And we are in a in a world right now where things are uh, ever changing. And, you know, we, you can see through the news and different articles and, and whatnot that there are violent acts that take place in many different locations. So I think it's something that we need to fight to keep our Second Amendment, because if we don't fight for it, and stand up for what has been given to us at the forming of our of our country, that it will very quickly, I think, will be taken advantage or taken away from us, and we'll look back and we'll wonder what happened. And what's your professional background? What were you doing before you got elected? Uh, I'm in law enforcement. I still am in law enforcement. I'm, I'm a deputy with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, have been for uh, 20 years now. Nice. So you're somebody who knows about self-defense, uh, not just your own self-defense but why people need self-defense i guess is something uh that, that i'm sure that's something you've come across in a 20-year career in law enforcement definitely yeah. definitely i think it's something that uh you know people need to have that uh, that uh, freedom and that ability to utilize and take advantage of and you know not everybody is going to use the same uh, method of defending themselves but uh, the constitution the second amendment gives us that 
uh, that ability right now to do that. And as I stated on our on a Zoom call we had with the Gun Owners Association, uh, you know, I these different laws and things that are trying to be passed and these bills that are being presented, if people are uh, unhappy with with the way they are going and thinking that their rights are being infringed on, I encourage them to strongly write to their local representatives, whether it be at the state level or at the national level, depending on where those bills are being presented. And that's why I wanted you to come on the show. You're right out of the gates. You just get elected to uh, the city council, um, and you did so, like I said, with, with, with gratitude for the support of San Bernardino County Gun Owners, which we're super proud to, to have you there. And what did you guys do recently? You guys passed a uh, – tell everybody w- what you did in relation to H.R. 125. So about a month ago, back in March, you know, we were – we noticed at the beginning of the year that the H.R. Uh, 127 had – Oh, excuse uh, me, 127. My and, apologies. And uh, No, that's okay. And, um, and you know, obviously there are a lot of aspects in that that, that we felt that are infringing on your – Second Amendment rights and definitely an attack on your freedoms. And so our city council, we actually all voted to send a, a letter to our state, our Congress representative, which is Congressman Auburn Alty, a signed letter from all five of us stating that we were in opposition of that bill that was being considered and running through committee at the time. And uh, right now, I don't believe anyone has signed off on that. Uh, I don't know. I have not checked it since we last talked. Um, but, you know, it, it looked like it had kind of stopped at some point. I don't think anyone's picked it up yet. But still, it doesn't take long for someone to grab a hold of something. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, something gets pushed through. And a lot of times, your different levels of representatives, state or federally, um, they can make decisions based on what kind of uh, input and feedback they've gotten from people. And sometimes people don't really reach out to them and they're there to represent us. So take advantage of them being there. And like I said before, it, it may not be, may not seem like a lot. Oh, I'm just going to write a letter, but at least you have taken the, the opportunity to voice your opinion and put it out there and put it in front of them. And they can't say that they didn't know. Hey, John, let me, let me just uh, ask a question. Can you kind of explain H.R. 127 for folks that may not know what that uh, what that is, that bill is? Well, I don't have all the, the different facets in front of me, but there are a lot of different things that regulating uh, what you do with your weapon, how you register your okay. weapon, uh, where you, you have to disclose where you're going to store your weapon, or weapons, and then that would go into a database that could be accessed online. People could look that up and see where you live, where you store your weapons, and so that then becomes public knowledge, which I think most of us don't necessarily want everybody to know where we store our different weapons. Isn't that an infringement on privacy? Isn't that an infringement? Right? Isn't that an infringement on privacy? Yeah, I would. I would think it would be. It's like, where do I keep uh, my money at my house? You know, where do I stash exactly. my five dollars? Wow, so that that was one of the big things. And then the other is, you know, even went as far as to talking about uh, different background checks and psychological evaluations of not just the individual purchasing the weapon, but uh, it could also reach out to the other family members as well. And there's a lot more yeah, in that bill than just these areas that I've touched on. But okay. those are some creates that- creates licensing requirements for the possession of a firearm and ammunition. DOJ shall issue such a license if the if the individual is 21 years old, undergoes a criminal background check and psychological evaluation, completes a certified trading course. And has an insurance policy. It also outlines the circumstances under which DOJ must deny a license. Uh, for example, uh, the individual was ho- hospitalized or was diagnosed with uh, mental illness. Um, it also establishes additional requirements for uh, an antique firearm display license and a military style weapon license. So this is uh, wow. psychological tests. This is back as universal. Uh, background checks. This is, uh, in essence, an assault weapons ban, what, a so-called assault weapons ban. The HR 127 is a laundry list of anti-gun uh, malarkey well, all wrapped politi- up into one. How do the politicians get guns in? <laughs> well, 
They wouldn't pass well, half of that stuff. They're exempt from their laws. I mean, that's how oh, that works. that's right. I yeah, we wrote about this, what, a couple of months ago, I yeah. think. We had an article about that. But the important, and John, you're absolutely right. Writing letters, making phone calls, yes. all extremely important. But you guys doing it in an official manner so that a city, a city's government, you know, actually says, hey, you know what? We are against this. This is something that the other side does against us all the time. And uh, it's, because it's, they're organized, and it's really nice to see you know a city government saying, "Hey, you know what? We're going to step up. We're going to make this official." And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It was a great, great job. Uh, was it hard getting uh, getting the other folks on the city council on board, or, or how did that go? No, not at all. Uh, everybody, everybody was on board with it when it, uh, it came across on our on our one of our agendas as a topic to to speak about and we all unanimously agreed to uh, have a letter written and uh, sent sent back to uh, congressman alvin alti's office so that that wasn't a problem at all there uh you know you you will have when you're in politics like anything else in life you you have people that don't necessarily agree with you and so there will there were some that voiced that they did not think it was something that um we should be involved in but we disagree um, because it's something that definitely definitely involves our community because it, it involves every community across the country as far as I'm concerned. So, Well, and I'm curious, uh, Sean, how they were expecting to enforce it. that. Are these the people who are going to come into civilians' houses and check where their guns are being stored, <laughs> or do they expect you as the sheriff to do that? You know, I don't think they got gotten as far as uh, putting out how they would go through enforcing that, but, you know... Um, I think the more and more of these these laws they get out there, they make it more difficult uh, for the enforcement level. But they will find a way to to have it done. I mean, they'll they'll come up they come up with a bill. They'll come up with a way to try to enforce it. Well, John, awesome job. Really appreciate your leadership. Fantastic job. Uh, thank you so much for what you do as a law enforcement officer, and thank you so much for representing but, uh, gun owners in did, uh, Yukaipa. Did you get a response? Did yeah, get a yeah, response? you did. Well, from, what, from the negative re- feedback from them? Or, no, 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 just the fact that... From the congressman, From yes. the congressman. Did you get a response oh, back? I'm sorry. Yes. He, he did get the letter, and he is as well in, in uh, opposition of that bill. So Fant- he's thankful to get the letter. Fantastic. John, keep up the good work. God bless you and your fellow officers, and we'll definitely get you back on down the road. All right, folks. Up next, we have Sam the Gunman on Stump My Nephew and another mic drop by You Know Who. And you can't hear it if you don't listen, so stay with us right up to the end on AM FM. Or AM oh, FM. Yeah, AM FM. We are. We're on. We are. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. You can watch us live every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you're in the San Diego area, you can listen to us on 1170 AM. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can help restore and protect the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.